All right, we're finally ready to escape the graveyard. First, we need to go to the cemetery gates. So you see here it says, the gate is closed and will not budge. There must be a mechanism to open it somewhere. Well, the first sentence won't be true after we've flipped the switch, and we no longer need to hint the player afterwards either. So let's create an if statement that will determine whether or not we need to see this. So we'll say, if flip switch, is false, then it will show this because we have not yet finished the game. Else, I'll just paste this in here, else the gates are now open. You may leave the cemetery. And then we need to close the if statement. Now, this is going to be our exit. So I'm going to circle the leave with the brackets and turn it into a link to a new passage called end. Let's close that, and we now have the end passage here, which I will open, and we will say into darkness. And I'll just paste in some text here. You escape the cemetery and run into the night. You can never return to the world of man. You are no longer a part of it merely a creature alone in the darkness. The end. All right, so let's go ahead and reset the crypt as the start of the story. And fingers crossed, if everything's right, it should all work out. So let's play it, and we begin inside a crypt. Yep, we'll look around, and we quickly find the door and exit the crypt. Rushing outside, the door slams shut behind you. Okay, let's head to the east. And we see the gate is closed, will not budge, there must be a mechanism somewhere. Let's go back west. Okay, we see that rushing outside is no longer there. Let's go back to the cemetery, and we'll just do a walk around. Let's go south to the cottage. See the door is shut. Let's go west, we're at the bench. We'll go west to the hill. We'll go north to the path. We'll go north to the grave digger. But we're too scared to approach him. He does have an old key, though. We probably want that. Let's go east to the fountain, further east to a row of graves. There's an open grave with a shovel near it. We'll take that shovel. Let's go west. Let's go east again. Oh, now it's just an open grave. Let's go west. We'll go west, and now we can hit the man with the shovel. We will. The grave digger's now knocked out before you. He happens to have a key. I need to run to the south real quick. Go north? Okay, the key is still there. Let's take the key and go east. Let's go west again. Okay, nothing to grab there. Excellent. Let's head south, south, east, east, and now we can open the door to his house. We go in. We flip the switch. There's horror behind that face. We flee the cottage. We don't ever want to go back in, so let's go north to the gate. And now the gates are open because we flip the switch. We can leave the cemetery and off into darkness. The end. So that's pretty much the core of the game. There's one little thing I would like to add to this game, though, and that is an inventory. So if we open this up again, you'll notice that I've got this big useless sidebar over here. This appears by default when you use the sugar cube format. Some people don't like it. A lot of people seem to use this for inventory management. So even though we've only got a couple items in the game, I'd still like to just show over here that we have them. And the way we're going to do that is by creating another new data passage. So this has to be called Story Caption. And it has to be capitalized exactly like this. Let's give it that data tag. And because we've already defined it as red, we don't need to set it again. And over here on that sidebar is where we will keep track of the inventory. But the documentation says that caption is also where you can keep the created by credits as well as the version number. So let's say created by Casworks. And then underneath that, we're going to say items. And this is where we're going to list the shovel and the key. But they're only going to show up if we have them. So we'll say if has shovel is true. We'll say shovel. 
and this time I'm just going to keep them all in line. Then we will copy this, paste it below, and instead of shovel, we will say key, and we'll say key. Okay, so let's close this out, and let's run the game again. So, over here, created by Gasworks, and a list of items. First, we need to go get that shovel. Now, you'll notice it does not immediately put the shovel in here, but when we go west, it does. And the reason has to do with how Twine refreshes the UI. There is actually a command that you can force the UI to refresh. However, the documentation does not recommend doing that, or at least not doing it very often, because apparently it has issues with memory or something like that. So anyway, now let's go west and hit him with the shovel and we'll take the key and we'll head east and now we have the key in our items as well. Again, kind of unnecessary for such a small game like we have, but if you want to create something more complex, that's how you do it. And with that, our game is complete. I want to repeat that to get the most out of Twine, you really need to look at the cookbook and the sugar cube documentation to find out all the cool macros and properties that you can manipulate. But as you can see, with just a few simple elements, we can create a reasonably robust game. But if you noticed, it looks a little plain. One of the cool things about Twine is that it utilizes the same capabilities as web technologies. In other words, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. All the things you can do in web coding, you can do inside of Twine. So we're going to use some of that, and in the next videos, we're going to start sprucing up the game just a little bit, adding pictures, changing some colors, doing some stuff with the font, even throwing some audio, and try and make this into an actually complete game.